Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Rob Moroso's Peak Chevy from 1988. This is his cup debut car and another NASCAR Classics release. So let's take a quick look at the box right here. You got your typical NASCAR Classics box. Got a sample of the car right there. NASCAR Classics, Rob Moroso, Lionel Racing, 1988, number 47, Peak Chevrolet Monte Carlo. So you have a nice little bio on Rob Moroso. This was his cup debut car. And it was for Hendrick Motorsports, which I did not even know until I actually got this car, but there's that. NASCAR Classics, another sample of the car. They made a total of 732 of these things, Platinum Series, all that good stuff all around there. But let's get down to the car itself. It is a very, very nice looking diecast. Now, some people aren't going to like something like this because, you know, it's kind of a plain white car, but which... I'm not usually much of a fan of playing white cars, but for something about this one, just really looks awesome. Let's do a quick 360 of the car, yeah, as usual. He finished 14th in this car, so, you know, not bad for a rookie debut. But, I mean, it was a Hendrick car, so, who knows. But, you can see his rookie stripes right back there. There's one inaccuracy on this car that's kind of a strange inaccuracy that I'll get to later, but... Let's get down to the sponsors. On the hood, you have Peak Antifreeze and Coolant. Got the Chevy bow tie. Down the side, you have Peak. You have Uniden and Service. Over there, you have Uniden, Felpro, AC, and not sure what that blue logo is in the middle there. On the deck lid, on the back, I mean, you have Peak and 47. There's the rookie stripe, like I said. On the deck lid, you have nothing, and that's the inaccuracy. I found a picture of this car. Only ran once. Like I said, it was a cup debut car. And there's a peak logo on this deck lid. Now, I don't know why they wouldn't put that there. Like, what's the reasoning? It's not like it's... Well, you know, it's not like Peak was having some copyright issues or something, because clearly they got Peak on this car. It wasn't like some, like, random sponsor they couldn't get or something, so I really don't know why it's not there. There's really no reason why it's not there. But, oh well. The car still looks good, and it's not a blatant problem. Same on the other side. Let's take a look under the hood if it wants to open, which it doesn't. <laughs> Nothing on the other side of the hood, and there's the engine detail if you would like to see it. Take a look under the deck lid. There's your typical fuel cell and such back there. No roof flaps back then. There's the underside of the car if you would like to see it. Nice silver exhaust pieces. See, another thing you're probably noticing is like the E on Eagle seems a little messed up the way they put it like on the like tire markings. <laughs> Looks a little weird, but... Here it is next to the 164 scale if you want to see that. They did make it in both. This is one of the molds that they actually are like regular 164 scales. You know, plastic body, plastic base, plastic tires. Or metal body, plastic base, plastic tires. Interestingly enough, you see on this one they actually like fixed it a little bit around the contingencies. Because, you know, they don't have Winston obviously. See, on the original car there was a gap there that was kind of annoying. On the 124, they actually fixed it. They moved the NASCAR logo down, so it wasn't as big of a gap. But for some reason, on the 164, the gap is still there, as you can see. Not sure why that happened, but oh well. Overall, it's a very nice car. Like I said, if you like it, if you're into classic stuff, this is definitely a car for you. Rob Moroso was kind of a popular driver. Another driver that was taken before his time. I mean, he was drunk driving, so you can make your opinion on that one. But... He still had talent, and it was a shame we didn't get to see what he really could do in Winston Cup. So, this is one of the only really regular die-cast releases you can get for Rob Moroso, which is kind of weird. Like, there's a bunch of, like, 164-scale promos throughout the years. This is the only, like, action 124-scale die-cast that I know of that they've made for him. So, that's cool. But, you know, if you want it, this car just kind of varies in value. It's a little bit hard to get, but you can occasionally get it cheap if you look around for it. But I think that's really all I have to say. This has been a review of Marambaroso's Peak 47 from 1988. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.